Okay, I want to talk about asynchronous iterators. So I've talked about generators, I've talked about iterators, I've talked about the async and await functions. Now I want to talk about how you can leverage iterators to get data that's coming in large, large, large data sets. So let's take this as an example. I'm making a fetch call to the server and I'm going to be getting some data back, but I can't retrieve all the data in one call. So I'm talking a really big data set, not, you know, a thousand records or 10,000 records, something like that. I'm talking about millions upon millions of records. So if you've got these huge, huge data sets and you've got something on the server that's going to continually feed you chunks of data. So I'm grabbing the records a hundred at a time. I'm using JSON placeholder. It's a great website for getting test data just to try things out. And this is what making a call would give me. So I've got about a hundred records here, all this data going to be coming back to me and I'm going to make repeated calls to it. But I want to do this with a generator. I want to create an object that's going to just keep getting data. As long as there's data, it's going to keep feeding it to me. So how do I do that with an iterator? Well, I created an object here called posts and then I add an iterator to that object. So posts, has an iterator. That's the function right here. And then I'm going to make calls to this URL. So right here, this URL, my iterator, it needs to have a next function. That's how it's going to work. And we're going to make it asynchronous. That means when we make a call to it, this function is going to wait until it has the results. So we can do something like a set timeout or a fetch, like what we're going to do in this case. I need to make it asynchronous because I don't want to call next and get the result back immediately as undefined or promise pending, something like that. I want the actual data and I don't want to do anything until I have the data. I definitely don't want to make the next call. Like if you were to do a for of loop to call on an iterator, it's going to be calling next, 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 as many times as it can, as quickly as it can. Every time it gets a result back, it's looking for the object, it's going to look for this done, true, done, false. But if you've got undefined coming back because this thing hasn't finished resolving, you've it's made a fetch call which hasn't come back yet, you're getting undefined back all these times. And you're going to get thousands and thousands of these undefined coming back until you actually get a result. So we don't want to do that. We want to actually get a result. When I call next, I want the next to not do anything until my fetch is complete. And that's where the asynchronous iterator comes in. So I've made this next method asynchronous. Um, I've added a simple thing in here. I'm just checking a random number. If the random number is greater than 0 0.7, I'm going to return done. So that's the end of my record set. I don't know when this is going to happen. The random number gets generated once each time I make a call to the server. The result's going to come back from the random number. If the random number is greater than this, it's going to stop. If it isn't, then I'm going to do the rest of this, which is set up my request object, do my fetch, and I'm awaiting the fetch. So here's the async await. This is the asynchronous part of the iterator. So I'm going to tell you to wait for something. Here I'm telling you to wait for the result of the fetch. The fetch comes back. I've left off the catch and stuff for now. Uh, I just did this as a simple two-step await. Make the fetch for the request, get the response, convert it to JSON. That's the second one. I'm awaiting that as well. Now I have this data right here, this array of data. That's what's inside of this. So I'm going to console that out, and then I'm going to return from my next function my object that has the stringified version of the data, and done is false. All right, so I need to call my next method, but I need to call it in a way that's going to wait. I can't currently do a for of loop and make it await. That is something that's coming. It's going to be in the next version uh, of JavaScript, but it's not supported really yet. So I have an alternate method that you can do to achieve the same end. All right, this is going to deal with just the basic page. I have my page here. I've got a pre-formatted area right here called output. 
This is where I'm going to write out the results. My main area contains all this. When I click on it, I'm going to call the function to start fetching this. So let's take a look at that function. We get our iterator. This is posts, the object from up above. So I've created my iterator, called that function. Now this has the next method. Now I need to do this in a way that's asynchronous. I need to call the next method from here in an asynchronous way. So what do we do? Well, I create a function, actually an immediately evoked, immediately invoked function expression, an iffy. The iffy, if you haven't seen that, I have a video on that as well. I'll leave the link in the description down below. So the iffy, this is going to run immediately but I've made my iffy into an asynchronous function, which means it's allowed to wait for the results of things. Hey, you know what? My, my iterator next method, that's something that's going to require waiting for. So by turning this iffy into an asynchronous one, I can now await the result to come back from this. This is something if I put it in a loop, I couldn't do this. If I just did my for of trying to go through posts, it wouldn't work. Here, I'm actually saying, hey, you've got to wait for the result of next. When that comes back, this is going to be data. So this object right here, this whole object is going to be the data object. If data.value, so if there is something in value and data.done is false, I know I have some actual data from the server. I'm going to set my output inside the preformatted area here. I'm going to put a carriage return, and then I'm going to stringify. Oh, actually, I've already stringified. I don't need to do it again. We can just shorten that. There we are. So we're bringing back the data, and then I'm going to also console log out the data. Dot value. That's the part that we want. Uh, and console log data dot value. There we are. Okay, so this writes it out on the page. This writes it out in the console. And now here, this is how we keep it going. So a for of loop, it loops. It keeps going as long as the iterator is still sending us back this back data, as long as this data property does not say true. But if we're not getting a result back, we don't have that done property to check and see. So a for of loop is just going to keep giving us those undefines. I want to keep calling my get data function forever and ever and ever until I get to the point where I do get this proper result saying done is true. If done is true, I'm going to write out just done up here and inside the console. I am recursively calling this get data function once every two seconds. So I'm going to keep grabbing more and more and more data and I'm doing it in an asynchronous way. My iterator is an asynchronous function so it's asynchronous. It can wait for results. My get data function is asynchronous. It can wait for results. So both where I'm calling the iterator next and inside the iterator itself, both those parts have to be asynchronous for this to work properly. So we'll come over here, let's click on this. There we are, there's some data coming back, data coming back, done. Okay, so it only made two calls. Let's try this again. More data, there's 100 records, there's 100 records. Oh, again. I've done this, I've seen big long streams of it, it's just what the random number comes down to. So whatever this random number is. That time we got one. <laughs> there we go. There we're getting some more data this time. Okay, so that's how it works. That's how you can build an asynchronous iterator. A recursive function, which is set up to be asynchronous, and then making your next method inside your iterator asynchronous. That's all you need. So I'm going to uh, leave the code just for this in the description so you can download that and play with it. Feel free to keep experimenting to get um, 
different versions of this. Try it with different fetch calls. Try replacing the fetch with other promises. Wrap a promise around a set timeout or do other asynchronous things. See how it works. Um, once you see the power of this, once you understand that this is giving you the ability to really work with really large data sets and coming soon will be the for await uh, let val of obj. So we're going to be able to do that very soon where we await the result of this. So this is awaiting for the generator. It's kind of like what we did right here. This line, this is coming very soon, this syntax. So experiment with this, get comfortable with it. Soon enough, you'll be able to do this and it will open up a lot of doors. Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, if you found it useful, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching.